right, so we are back for episode four of the three body problem. As is usual, I have um, some thoughts on the previous episode, having uh, slept on it. Now that we know that the video game was an avatar for this alien species, one of the things I think that comes out of that is that the aliens, whatever they are, are not like us. That thing where they dehydrate until a stable period and then rehydrate is obviously not something human beings could do. We're not that, we're mostly water, but not that much water. And we're incapable of going into hibernation like that, especially as that seems to be something that is intrinsic, not technological, something that they do biologically, not something that is imposed on them by a technological solution. There are creatures that can do that. I've mentioned tardigrades before and how they can survive extreme events by essentially going into hibernation. And so the implication here is that the people in the video games are avatars to interact with humans, but the aliens are probably very, very different from us. And so I don't know if they're ever going to give us a look at what the aliens look like, but uh, I think that's a very interesting point that they're, are, they're sort of hinting at here. The other thing I, I really liked, the more I thought about it was, you know, the way they describe this, uh, this alien civilization, that they have these civilizations arise, and that during the period when the planet is in a stable orbit around one star or a stable configuration of the stars. Uh, and then when this system becomes unstable and the climate varies a lot, it, it goes further out and it get, freezes over or it gets too close and it gets hot. Or that nonsense about the syzygy, about how it, uh, the gravitational field disruption is, which is, does not work. Uh, I explained that in the last video. That ends the civilization and then they have to start rebuilding. One of the things I once heard was that civilization is what happens between ice ages. Our human civilization right now has arisen because we are in a 12,000 year long period called the Holocene since the last ice age. And Earth's climate has been remarkably stable for that 12,000 years. And that is one of the things that has allowed our civilization to arise and thrive and for us to get to our current point. And one of the reasons people are concerned about global warming uh, is we as a species might survive, but if it were to tip us over into a more unstable period where the earth gets very warm or where you just get unstable where you swing between warm periods and cold periods, that might make civilization much more untenable. So I, I think there's a, a parallel there between uh, what we worry about in, with long-term uh, climate changes and what they are seeing on this planet. The climate, climate changes that they depict in the video game happen way too fast. I mean, these would th be the things that would happen over many years. I understand they're trying to accelerate the time scale to in the video game to try to emphasize what the stakes are. So uh, that makes sense. But uh, I think uh, hopefully we're going to get some more revealed in this episode. So let's just jump in. Episode four of Three Body Problem. I'm the same man you met in Shinshi. I could have spent the rest of my life in that hut trying to save a subspecies of the northwestern brown swallow, or I could use the resources available to me to do more. Sort of true. So text me if you can make it, but um, I'm ready to go whenever you are. I wonder what Jin's gonna do when she finds out he was murdered. Gabriel, bonjour. Madame Chiang nous parlait du senti. Oui. Est-ce que je vivrai assez longtemps pour rencontrer notre Seigneur? Si notre Seigneur veut que nous soyons là quand ils arrivent, alors. Is wrong, wrong, si la possible. Hmm? This is like a cult. Et si ce n'est pas le cas, c'est qu'il a de mieux, n'est-ce pas? It's not like a cult. It is a cult. Don't be afraid. Nothing will happen to you. Not to any of you. We will protect you. That's better. It's nice to see you smile. So I'm guessing that voice on the box is the aliens. How are they communicating with them in real time? Is the fleet already here or what's going on? You think they're in contact with aliens? You don't need to believe in Santa Claus to believe people give gifts on Christmas. 
Do you believe in Santa Claus? Ho, ho, ho. All right, Benedict Wong needs to be in more things. He is just killing it here. Don't take your phone inside when you get to the location. Well, you still be able to track me. I hope you're kidding. Green light. <laughs> Can't you ever say anything that you know to be false? Can't you lie? What is known is communicated as soon as communication takes place. So you communicate through thought. So the story, it is a lie about a liar? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose it is. We need to consider this. <sighs> My lord. My lord. This is why you don't contact aliens or, or something like that to solve our problems, because their understanding of reality might be different from ours. I mean, this idea of a race that doesn't understand fiction is has a long and storied history in science fiction. And it was in Galaxy Quest for, for crying out loud. But it does illustrate the dangers of giving power to something you don't understand. A liar is someone whose words are false. A liar cannot be trusted. We cannot coexist with liars. <laughs> My lord. <laughs> See, now, now you've done it. You were so focused on what the aliens could give you. You didn't stop to think about what they might take from you. I trust in our Lord to provide this. I know it feels strange to say it at first. It makes us all sound like religious goons. Except our Lord is real. Being a religious loon doesn't mad depend on whether God is real or not. It depends on how you are behaving in response to that. I am honored to introduce the founder of our movement, our reason for hope, the cause of our salvation. Everyone, please welcome our founder, <laughs> Dr. Ye Wen Jia. Yep, I knew that was, they were playing that. When I was a young woman, I saw my country torn apart. My family was destroyed. I was sent to hell. I saw human beings cut each other to pieces, destroy each other without a thought, all in the name of progress. And now you have become what you beheld. And what has changed? They travel to us at enormous speeds, but it will take them centuries to arrive. 400 years. 400 years? Space is big. Moving at 1% of the speed of light, which is pretty big. Um, I No faster than light travel, point in the series' favor. Falls to us. I have to tell you something. Something insane, but true. Jen, what's happening? Just listen, okay? It's about all of us. It's about you and me and Jack. All of us. It started a long time ago. Before we were born. So, one of the things... I'm appreciating about this series is that people talk to each other. I hate the idiot plot where people don't talk to each other and shenanigans ensue and nothing can be done. I like that Augie eventually told them I'm seeing these numbers. I like the Jin's letting him in like this. I like when characters talk to each other 
and because that's how problems get solved. So I, I really do appreciate that about this series, that people are talking to each other. Thank you. It's going to be different this time. Our own research base. Why here? No borders, no politics, no interference. I think you're going to find it's very difficult to run a radio telescope on a pitching ship at sea, but we'll see where they go with this. Our trip. Sometimes I wondered if it was real. It's real. They're coming. I was wondering if that was their daughter at the beginning. They are coming. And there's nothing you can do to stop them. And when they arrive, you'll be so grateful. All right, um, it was a good episode. Uh, we had some really interesting plot developments. I sort of saw that coming, that she was going to be the leader of this cult. Uh, the, but um, I do... One of the things that I think, since we're on the subject of Game of Thrones, because it's from the same people, one of the things that I think has infested popular entertainment of all varieties is the idea of twists that you should, you know, I'm a reactor, that I should jump in my chair and say, oh my God, I didn't see that coming. But twists kind of suck unless you set them up. And what I like is twists that are more in the sort of Babylon 5 model where you set things up so that an attentive viewer can see what's going to come and, you know, maybe there'll be occasional surprises, but they're like, okay, now it makes sense. And okay, I see where they were going with this. Not, you know, just a twist and it came from nowhere. And I sort of like the way this series is building things up, that, you know, this is a revelation that she's in charge of this cult. But if you watch the series carefully, as I've said in the last few episodes, you can see how they were building towards that and how it was hinted at, so it's not a huge surprise. And I think um, this series is so far doing a really good job of setting up these plot developments, I don't want to call them twists, I'll call them plot developments, so that they are logical, that they flow, that what has happened in episode one has set up what happened in episode two, that set up what happened in episode three, that's setting up what happened in episode four, and so on. So I really like the way this plot is coming together in a logical fashion. The acting, the directing, the set decoration, it's all really top-notch. And so I think the, the series is really good. Now, I did uh, post today the reaction to episode one and heard back from uh, you guys. A lot of you liked it. Um, one of the things people were saying was you should watch the Chinese language series that is on Amazon Prime. I might eventually watch that and maybe post a reaction, but given that this is currently the big trending thing, that's why I decided to go with this one. I understand, my understanding, and you can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, is that the Chinese language version is closer to the novel but also leaves out some stuff like the cultural revolution stuff that the Netflix series has, has done. I like this idea of aliens, of the disconnection between what the aliens are thinking and what humans are thinking. And clearly it's having a consequence that the alien said, we're afraid of you. We don't trust you. And after that, all these cult members are arrested. I think what's, what this is setting up is that the aliens have decided to cut them loose and decided we don't need a fifth column on Earth anymore. We have what we need to successfully invade and potentially extinguish the human race if that's what we want. So again, setting things up logically, 
having this plot flow, having A causes B causes C, I think it's doing a really good job of that. So I really look forward to where this is going. Now, I don't understand, so to, to this point, there are two big scientific mysteries that need to be revealed to me. One is how they are communicating with the aliens in real time. If the fleet is traveling at 1% of the speed of light and it's going to take 400 years to get to Earth, how are they communicating with it instantaneously over that distance? I hope they will reveal that. And also how the aliens know everything and are creating these numbers and people's eyes and all this other sort of stuff they're doing that looks like magic. I'm hoping we will get some explanation for that in the next few episodes. I have a suspicion of where we're going with this, and but we'll, we'll see what happens. Because right now, it seems like the aliens have almost magical godlike powers, which is why, of course, this... Uh, organization worships them as God and calls them our Lord, but uh, we'll we'll see where it goes from there if they have some scientific background to that. So, uh, episode four in the tank so far. I'm still enjoying it. Uh, I'm told that the next episode is probably the highlight of the season. So, looking forward to that. Until then, I'm Mike Siegel. I write for Ordinary Times. Thank you for watching.